Brand new Ryzen 7 5800X. CPU utilization around about 80%, 90%, it's climbing. I knew it was gonna cause problems. Have you ever heard of a gaming PC? Probably. What about a CPU? A processor? Yes, I bet you have. But the question you're probably asking yourself is what sort of processor do I need? But more importantly, how many cores is gonna give me the best experience? So in this video, we're gonna be putting this to the test. Exactly how many cores do you need? We have a selection of the latest 5000 series Ryzen CPUs. We're gonna be testing four, eight, six, and 12 core CPUs to give you the definitive answer, I guess, of which one you should go for, and ultimately what the performance difference is in game. The gaming laptop you've been waiting for has arrived. The latest Omen 15 not only looks incredible, but comes packing some serious gaming performance. The new, smarter chassis is remarkably thin and light, yet it uses the latest Intel and AMD processors for all-you-can-eat portable power. Play games at sky-high frame rates with the optional 144Hz display, and then bask in the glory of super smooth gameplay thanks to the mighty NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics cards. Learn a little bit more about this incredible gaming machine today with that link down below. The way that this is going to work is pretty simple. We're going to run all of the games starting with Cyberpunk at 1440p max settings. Obviously if you're playing at 1080p then it is actually a little bit more intensive on the CPU but if you're running at 4k then it's less intensive so you've got to tailor it a little bit to your resolution but I think this is going to be the sweet spot. So kicking things off we do have the 5900X which is a 12 core which is a 12 core Ryzen CPU. And as you can see, we're getting utilization of around about 30, 25, 35%. So that number would insinuate that we're not really using all of the CPU. And that is definitely correct, but you've got to remember that higher core counts don't necessarily help games because the clock speeds are going to vary depending on the chip that you're going for. The reason that we're using these Ryzen 5000 series chips is because the single core performance are actually very similar among all of them, but obviously there is going to be a trade-off between needing a certain amount of cores and needing a certain amount of single core performance, and that is what we're going to find out here today. That coil wine though, listen to that. Oh, to be fair, we are getting 4035 frames a second, so that'll do it. You are dead. <laughs> That's how I feel after benchmarking. Anyway, I was able to grab a clean run in the end, and now just to show you what sort of frame rate we're getting, anywhere really between around about 120 and 150 frames a second. And even though this is an older title, it's still one that looks absolutely fantastic. But just look at that CPU utilization though, around about 10 to 13%. We are not getting the most out of this chip. But of course, we do actually need to talk about the graphics card that we have in our system, otherwise these results are all completely pointless for you. And the one that we've got here is an AMD card, it is the brand new 6800 XT, it is the tough edition. But the thing is, if you're looking at a more mid-range, maybe budget-friendly graphics card, then because of the way everything scales, you don't need such a huge CPU to actually get the job done either. You're always going to have a bottleneck in your system, and it's either going to be the GPU or the CPU. And at the higher end, it's more likely to be the CPU, hence why we're testing it on these cards. But if you do want maybe like a more budget-friendly version of this, then it's a video I could make. Let me know down in that comment section below. Our final game then, everyone's absolute favorite, definitely a game I've finished, is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And again, this is a brilliant example of a game that can actually be quite CPU limited. So even if you don't want to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider today, then it's a good indication of future games that are gonna be very intensive, or I guess things like Cyberpunk that are very intensive right now. I would call this the canary in the coal mine of PC gaming. I mean, more technically, I suppose it's the canary in the coal mine of CPUs in PC gaming. You can put that on the box if you want. Okay, that is the first of our CPUs tested. We've got some warmth that has come in my direction, a slightly like new GPU smell as well, which is quite pleasant. Let's get this swapped out for the eight core 5800X. And to do that, I need my apparently comically long screwdriver, but I'm telling you, a long screwdriver saves lives. And yes, if you're watching this thinking, why on earth is he mounting his CPU vertically? It's because I, uh, I don't have much time and I haven't eaten lunch. Do as I do, not do as I say. No, no, the other one. It's now time to go for our brand new Ryzen 7 5800X. New CPU installed. Walking down the street. It's never been more interesting, has it? I mean, to be fair, in Cyberpunk, 
It is an absolutely beautiful looking game. I mean, just have a look around. And interestingly, the CPU usage hasn't actually changed as much as I thought it would. We're still at around about 32% or so, which if I'm a betting man, I would wager that this is probably gonna be the right price to performance chip for really high-end gaming. I don't think we're gonna see any difference between this and the Ryzen 9, but I'm prepared to be proved wrong. I mean, this has never been the most interesting part of the process, but I am quite interested in the temperatures as well. We've got around about 67 degrees, and this is obviously an open test bench really that we've got going at the moment, but you are definitely gonna get lower temperatures on smaller core count CPUs, just because there's less stuff going in there. They generate less heat, and that's another way to save money really because you then won't need a big expensive cooling solution. It's also worth noting that you do get a cooler in the box with the Ryzen 5s, but not with the 7s or the 9s. So again, if you're trying to save money, Ryzen 5 is definitely a very good price proposition. That is a hot graphics card. Oh mama, our Ryzen 7 and our Ryzen 5. I am just gonna double check that so that we don't do the same chip twice. Think how embarrassing that would be. These are getting well used now, aren't they? I've done loads of videos on these. In fact, shameless plug, if you do want to see a full build guide on this PC, everything that's in it, the way it works, full frame rates, everything, then you can actually find them in the top right hand corner of your screen or in the end screen, because obviously you want to watch this video first don't you? I know you do. I know you do. It is so bizarre, but it definitely is easier to mount this vertically. Just because you have that little catch that stays in place by gravity, you don't have to use your... Forget everything I was saying. This is the moment that you've been waiting for then, the 5600X only six cores. Is this going to pose a problem? Is it going to work without any issues whatsoever? Am I going to talk more and more dramatically as this video progresses? Yes! Am I going to start stuttering with my words as well as this video progresses? In... Let's have a look at that CPU utilization and it's actually around about 87% for a second there. That is huge. That is huge. I mean, to be honest, it definitely doesn't look any different. It just feels the same. I know we're not doing a lot of motion or anything, but you can usually see if something's significantly different and we're not getting that right now. Three computer processors down and one to go. And the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you have probably worked out at this stage that there is no 5300X, or at least there's not one just yet. So what's he gonna do? Is he gonna use the 3300X quad-core chip? Or is he gonna magic one up? I mean, we could give it a go, couldn't we? You guys have been saying I'm Harry Potter. Boom. Is that funny? I don't even know anymore. I'm. I'm losing my mind a little bit. Realistically, what we can do though is just use the 5600X and disable two of the cores. So while it won't be exactly the same as the upcoming 5300X, it should be pretty similar to be honest with you. CPU utilization around about 80%, 90%, it's climbing. 100% CPU utilization dropped down to 85. I think it's fair to say that four cores is probably not gonna be enough for most people, not at this level, but that's what the results are for. Oh, we're getting a little bit of stutter. We're getting a little bit of stutter in Cyberpunk. I knew it. I knew it was going to cause problems. I'll tell you what, it really does show you how good these new Ryzen chips are, because even with two cores disabled, the CPU utilization is still around about 70-80%. So it's definitely at the limit, and it's not what I would want in my personal system. I don't think this will have the legs for years and years to come, especially with a graphics card like this. But without seeing the actual end benchmark average numbers, I think it is incredibly impressive just how good these chips are when it comes to that single core performance. And again, it does show you how important that is for gaming. This is it then, the numbers are in, all of the tests have been conducted. Are we gonna see a big difference? I would wager that, especially with the four core chip, we're definitely gonna see reduced numbers, but probably the six, the eight, and the 12 are gonna be quite similar. So starting with our four core CPU, we got 137 frames a second in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That rose to 144 with six, 147 with eight, and then slightly lower around about 145 with 12 cores. So pretty much around about 145 frames a second is gonna be not particularly CPU bottlenecked, whereas we definitely did run into a bit of an issue with the four core, but nothing drastic. Definitely a more significant difference with Far Cry 5 though, 88 minimum on the four core chip, rising to 100 frames a second on the six, 
104 on the 8, and then 106 on the 12 core. So pretty much I think the 8 and the 12 definitely won out there. There's going to be a bit of margin of error really because even though it's the same run, you're going to get different results from time to time. And remember that at 1080p, these results would be even worse. The higher the frame rate, the more CPU horsepower you're going to need to actually be able to run a game at that resolution. PC Centric has now very thoughtfully handed you over to me, Benchmark Marcus, and I have absolutely been blown away by these results. I was not expecting this at all because in both Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3, there was no difference between any of the results whatsoever. The Witcher I sort of saw coming because it is obviously an older title and it was designed really with quad-core chips in mind. But Cyberpunk, this is a game that I know from experience does not run very well really on the 3600X and it doesn't really run very well on like a 7700K or one of the older quad-core chips. So for a 5600X with two cores disabled to be able to keep up with an 8-core and a 12-core chip, I think is really impressive. And it really does show that the 5600X is absolutely astounding when it comes to bang for buck. Because while 6 cores might not sound that impressive, in the things that matter, which is the games that you're going to be playing, it delivers in spades. It is awesome. So overall, this has been quite an interesting test now, hasn't it? I did expect to see a bigger difference really between the 6-core and the 8, but it does go to show just how good that 5600X is. Don't forget that this is purely just a gaming test if you are wanting to run other things as well, maybe doing some streaming or just having a load of applications open whilst you're playing your games, then having extra cores is really gonna help there. And obviously when you're looking at playing at higher refresh rate games, things like Apex Legends, Fortnite, CSGO, those are the titles that really do need a very strong CPU to keep up with all of those frames that's gonna be coming out of your graphics card. And of course, don't forget that all of these tests were done at 1440p. If you're playing a game in 1080p with the same hardware, then you would need a better CPU to be able to keep up. Let me know your thoughts on this video down in that comment section below. Would you do things differently? Should there be multiplayer tests in it? If you've enjoyed this video, then please smash that like button. It really helps out, you honestly wouldn't believe. And of course, get subscribed for more videos just like this delivered straight to your inbox. If you do want to check out current pricing on any of these Ryzen chips or anything featured on this desk, then you can find them as always with my Amazon affiliate links listed down below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out the brand new Omen 15. Equipped with NVIDIA RTX graphics, you not only get super smooth, sky high frame rates, but the next generation of gameplay thanks to real time RTX ray tracing and AI enhanced DLSS 2.0. Combine that with NVIDIA's Reflex tech and the mighty Omen Tempest cooling system, and you'll be able to play and win for hours on end. Turn up the volume with Bang & Olufsen Audio and customize it your way with the Omen Gaming Hub. Check out the Omen 15 today with that link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.